Hi ladies, I wanna talk about women's empowerment. Now specifically, I wanna talk about what it looks like to be authentically empowered as a woman versus trying to have power over others. And there's a real difference here because in our world today, it seems like women are seeking to have empowerment when it really is just seeking to have power over. Uh, so what is the difference? Now, authentic empowerment comes from within. And it comes from a place of really knowing who we are and being clear and aligned with our purpose, really actively in some form of service and, and making a contribution in the world that feels like it's actually helping people um, and that it's valued by people versus power over where it's like we're trying to fit ourselves into you know, the male model of what power looks like. And that tends to be, you know, competing, uh, trying to belittle others in order to feel more powerful. It might be manipulative. And so this is not the kind of power that we want. Uh, we want to have authentic empowerment, which is from the inside out versus power over others in order to feel powerful. So for example, if we were to look at the movies today, there's a new trend that's been happening within our movies today. And I don't think that they're portraying a very good example of authentic women's empowerment. Uh, rather, they're portraying women being in powerful positions, but in a male way of doing it. Now, hey, I am all for women's empowerment, but why do women need to start trying to take over the few male role models that are good masculine role models in order to feel powerful, in order to feel equal. So instead of taking over, even I think it was maybe Thor or, uh, was also being replaced by a woman. Now, this doesn't make sense to me when it comes to authentic women's empowerment. Why would we need to compete or even tear down the masculine uh, in order to build up the feminine? That's not authentic, that is just competition. So instead, what we should be doing is like leave the men their role models. That's totally fine. There's some really good archetypal role models out there and they need to be left alone and let men have those good role models. And meanwhile, the feminine can start creating a new model for what it looks like to be a woman in power. Create your own franchise rather than trying to tear down the, the franchises for the men and replace it with a woman. Another example was the Black Widow Marvel flick that came out. And this one is really clearly all these women, you know, were in these roles and they were first victimized and then they were turned into these ruthless killers. And the whole movie is women beating the snot out of each other. <laughs> and this is very much a, you, you, you kind of expect to see the, the masculine in that kind of a role, but it was a bit shocking to see the feminine in that kind of a role. So again, this is not necessarily portraying a feminine empowerment. This is portraying a feminine in violence. And there's the feminine is really meant to be more representing love and nurture. And yes, there's power there, but it's not power through violence. Um, it's power through love. And there's a really significant difference uh, when we can shift back into that authentic feminine empowerment. Now, this is just my perspective, but you know, even in our world today, for example, we see with the push for gender equality, as well as transgender equality, great transgender equality, I'm all for it. But rather than having someone who was born biologically male, had testosterone in their body, built up that body mass and that muscle, competed in pro sports, and then went through sex change and gender change operation to then go and compete in women's sports, and again, crack their skulls because they have so much more body mass, that doesn't actually support women's empowerment. There was a large push at one point for women to have women's leagues of sports separate from the men's leagues of sports and to have it, you know, get funded. So now all of a sudden we're, you know, we're muddying the waters with that. Instead, the transgender should have a transgender division of their own so that they can uh, compete with each other without you know, bashing in women who are going to be clearly at a disadvantage from someone who was born a male and then had a sex change. Again, 
might you might not agree with me and I appreciate and accept that you have your own perspective on that but I just want you to again consider the possibility that rather than having to replace and tear others down in order to feel empowered and equal we need to instead learn how to give room for for that to have its its you know appreciation and honor and respect there while creating a new uh, field for us to move into our empowerment. We want to build up rather than to tear down when we're looking at authentic empowerment. So let's talk about how can we as women stand into that more authentic empowerment. What does it look like and what doesn't it look like? Well, let's start with what it doesn't look like. Sometimes women are using control in order to feel powerful. There, you know, you can, we can all think of people who, or women who maybe get a bit too controlling and uh, maybe they use anger or maybe they use some other emotion to get their way and to push and to force what it is they want. And this is usually an overcompensation for not feeling actually empowered within oneself. So, you know, if a, a woman who's in an authentic place of leadership is gonna see the people that she's leading, not as people to control, but as people to, who are like her family that she's here to help care for and, you know, maybe coach, or support along the way, but also hold the firm boundaries as needed, but come from a place of, of love and appreciation and inspiration. So when we really acknowledge and share our appreciation for others, they feel more inspired to continue to perform. Whereas when we come in with criticism and complaining and it's not good enough, then they feel diminished. So the feminine in her power is gonna be someone who, who lifts people up and, and encourages and inspires their greatness and helps them like a mother helping a child. You know, you can be anything, you can do anything. And you did, oh, you did such a good job there. And oh, you know, maybe that wasn't quite right, but what did you learn from that? And how can we, you know, do better next time? And so we have to really come with this. You're not trying to mother everybody, but there is a, a place where we are holding that protective and loving energy for the community or for the people who we are helping to lead. Now, some examples of, uh, now there's multiple examples really of, of women in their power. And one of the best places to go to is not to necessarily look at the humans because all the humans are, are flawed or, or you know, they have some kind of distortion here and there in our current manifestation. But we can look to the archetypes and you know whether we're talking gods and goddesses from ancient pantheons or you know the tarot uh, there's all these archetypes that show what authentic feminine empowerment might look like but with the women there's there's many different types uh, you for example can see your aphrodite type who's beautiful who's sensual who knows that she's you know beautiful and sensual who who loves to love and she's very romantic and you know and she's going to go around the world and she's going to bring that beauty and she's going to be very very feminine looking and feminine behaving but people will see her as almost like a goddess so they're going to honor her rather than try to control i mean she won't be controlled she's very powerful as a goddess on the other hand you have maybe your athena type who's more intellectual who's a little more warrior energy but she's still very much feminine and she will still look very feminine and look very much like a goddess but she comes out really strong ready to you know lead the armies for example but she comes with wisdom and she has that insight uh, where it's not just about war, 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 or aggression, or violence. It's about, hey, there's wisdom here, and let's guide this use of strength with intelligence and with wisdom and with insight. Uh, so there's another example. You can think of the queen who very much is in that position of royalty, who holds a certain sense of responsibility for her kingdom or her queendom, and she you know, upholds that responsibility to serve the kingdom as well as to lead, as well as to be in this position of, of being kind of elevated from humanness, not getting caught up in the fray of all the politics or the opinions or you know, this side versus that side, but to hold a higher, a higher bar, to hold that higher status of 
of royalty, which is beyond or above human, which is a step for us to aspire towards, to then move towards our godliness or our divinity. So that energy of royalty is actually very important for us as a way to understand what does it look like to be um, in our highest divine capacity while also being a human. And yes, of course, all humans have their flaws, but we can aspire towards greater and greater nobility, greater and greater royalty, holding that composure, being in beauty and that royalty at the same time as being in leadership and a sense of authority. Um, now, when our authority comes from within, because we know ourselves, because we trust ourselves, because we don't have to compare ourselves, we don't have to prove ourselves to anyone, but we just, we are at one with ourselves. We're aligned with who we are from the inside and we've tapped into that sense of authentic empowerment from the inside. Then we can show up in the world and we can lead without having to feel like we have to control everything, without feeling like we have to have power over anyone else, without feeling like we have to compete with anyone because we know who we are Therefore, I'm going to be different from that person or that person. There's no need to compare or compete. Uh, so this is where we want to get to when it comes to authentic feminine empowerment. Now, in our world today, when people want to feel a sense of power or value in the world, they often are talking about equality. Men and women should be equal. Uh, you know, regardless of your sexual orientation, we should all be equal. Regardless of our gender identity, we should all be equal. And uh, regardless of our race, we should all be equal. But in the process of trying to go for equality, we're actually creating more separation because there's all these special interest groups and all these social justice groups that are identifying smaller and smaller and smaller subsections of the population. And then they're shouting for you know attention and equality. And in the process, I 100% agree that we should all be considered equally valuable, equally honored, equally respected, and having opportunity uh, that you know we can all strive for those opportunities. But there's not necessarily equality in our world, and let me explain why. Well, number one, we're all, equality in a physics perspective means the same as, right? The equal sign mathematically means. A is the same as B, so equal, but we're not the same. And here's the thing, we are different. You and I are different, men and women are different, women and women are different, men and men are different, we're all different. And we're meant to be different, we're meant to be unique in who we are. So how then can we all be the same or equal? So yes, equally important, equally uh, powerful in different ways, but we have different functions. We all come in with a unique set of gifts, a unique set of experiences, a unique purpose to fulfill. And rather than trying to be equal or the same as everybody, we should be just trying to figure out what is my role? Who am I? And what am I here to accomplish that is uniquely mine? And it doesn't matter what my skin color is, what my sexual orientation is, what my gender identity is, it doesn't, none of that really matters. All you need to do is be you and be authentically you and find your unique gifts and find your unique purpose and bring those gifts forward into this world to express your uniqueness. And when everybody is expressing their uniqueness and then appreciating and accepting each other's uniqueness and the differences, and we're all finding that perfect place that we fit in the grand puzzle of you know this earth and how we can contribute to all making this world a better place whether it's by bringing beauty or art or advancing knowledge or you know helping uh, build things up whatever it may be we all have a unique role to play and when every single person is playing their unique role or their unique piece of that puzzle we're going to create a beautiful world and everybody's going to be happy they're gonna be enjoying their life. They're gonna be doing what they're passionate about, doing what they're good about, and being honored in exchange for the service that they bring to the world. That is what we're really looking for. So equally honoring, yes, but we all ultimately, there's not a, it's not entitlement. We're not entitled to it either. 
We are innately valuable, but we also need to show up in the world and bring our unique gifts forward so that we can make a contribution. And the people who are really striving and, and pushing themselves and applying their will to accomplish and to make that unique contribution, they are the ones who do deserve to be acknowledged for that, whether it's by getting you know, paid more or whether it's by having you know, new doors opened up for them for, for some opportunities, whatever that is, it's, it's an earned inequality. And we, that may not be the popular conversation right now, but actually it's what we all really do want because if we're all equal and we level the playing field, nobody can actually accomplish higher levels of achievement if everybody has to be equal and the same. So we want to be able to achieve our greatest potential. We want to be able to achieve you know, that success doing what we are uniquely here on this earth to do. And we need to let go of all these things that we're creating to separate us based on superficial things that really are not about the core essence of who we are. So we're going higher now in this process, deeper in this process of what authentic empowerment looks like. And when it comes to really truly being empowered, it's gonna maybe conflict with what the, the narrative is out there in the mainstream, in the media, in political views, and you know, sort of gender race and, and race wars. And all of that is superficially based. What we need to accomplish is getting in touch with the depths of who we are and recognizing that we're all unique and we're not necessarily more special than anyone else, but we are unique in who we are and our role is to bring that forward, to awaken those gifts, to awaken that greater potential within us, to bring it forward into the world and to actually use our gifts to make a difference. To, in a way, not necessarily prove our worthiness, but to, uh, support the progression of humanity in some way that actually is like what can I accomplish with who I am now regardless of what anyone else around me does right my empowerment should have nothing to do with anyone or anything else around me my empowerment comes from within and when we can stand in knowing who we are knowing our gifts knowing our purpose that is a place where you'll really when you get there you'll really look around and you're like, I don't need to compete with that because that's not me. I am who I am. This is what I'm here to do. All I need to do is focus on what my role is, my mission, my purpose, and my expression of gifts and my, you know, creating that joy uh, that, you know, whatever is joyful for me, as long as I'm not bringing any harm to anyone else and I'm bringing my joy into the world and my passion and my gifts, that is a place of authentic empowerment. So I challenge you to let go of the narrative of you know, the mass distraction that's happening in the world right now. And I challenge you to really look within. Instead of looking at all of these things outside that supposedly take your power away, none of that can take your power away. Only we can choose to give our power away. And if we can choose to give our power away, then we can also choose to take our power back. And that choice is within you and nobody else can make that decision for you. But in order to be in our power, again, we also have to be in a place of self-responsibility, to recognize that I am the creator in my life, I am the one who determines my course in life, I am the one who makes up my mind about any situation outside of me, and you know, we, we choose what story we create around it. So if you don't like you know, the world around you, then change what's going on inside of you and create a different vibe, a different narrative, a different perspective and way of looking at things inside of you and your world, your immediate environment will start to change, your relationships will start to adjust and then that ripple effect will go out into the world and you'll be able to put positive energy out there instead of negative energy out there. So ultimately for us to be in our authentic empowerment, we have to take responsibility for ourselves and for the impact that we make in the world. And this responsibility is not just for what we do, it's also for what we say, and it's also for what we think, because our thoughts create. So whatever's going on inside of you, whatever narrative, whatever story, whatever words you're saying to yourself, whatever thoughts are running through your mind, those thoughts are what are creating your outer reality. 
So if you want to make a change, start working on empowered thoughts, uplifting thoughts, thoughts around how can you discover your uniqueness, your purpose, your gifts, and focus on that rather than all that other stuff that's going on out there that wants to keep you away from you. So I hope that this, I know this has been a bit hard hitting here, but I hope that it's supported you in maybe shifting your perspective on what real authentic empowerment looks like and how we can maybe start to shift from trying to have power over others and be destructive in that process of competition into finding that authentic empowerment from within and looking towards how we can cooperate with others to create a better world collectively. Now, if you've liked this video, definitely please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get more great content. And if you know of anyone that you think would really benefit from this message, then please share it with them. And uh, I hope that you will join me again for the next episodes. Mm -hmm.